presented by Maslin Beauty Blend Broadly. Tonight's Tales of Tomorrow, What You Need. Starring William Redfield with Edgar Staley. We roll out the carpet now to welcome you again to Tales of Tomorrow. Brought to you this week by C.H. Maslin and Sons, makers of Maslin Beauty Blend Broadlooms. Now, I don't have to tell you that the Maslin mills have been justly famous for the weaving of fine rugs and carpets for four generations of the Maslin family. Now, in recent years, they've achieved an enviable reputation in another and quite different field, the making of fine hunting and fishing clothes. Now, this is an area of manufacture where business and pleasure truly overlap. For the Maslin mills are perhaps the only great weaving mills where every year on the opening day of the hunting and fishing season, the entire plant is closed so that everyone who works in the Maslin mills can take to the woods. Now this corporate love of sports makes the manufacture of hunting and fishing clothes at Maslin more than just a business enterprise. So think of Maslin next time you think of hunting and fishing as well as when you carpet your home. And now, C.H. Maslin and Sons are proud to present tonight's Tale of Tomorrow, the first act of What You Need. Good evening. What can I do for you? Maybe you can tell me what I need. Pardon? Your sign says I have what you need. Well? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh... Carmichael. Tom Carmichael. I'm a freelance writer. I've been watching... I hadn't noticed. I... Uh, I know it's a bit early, Mr. Talley, but I really... Well, I couldn't wait. Uh, have you the time to get what I need? Uh, if you'll wait just a moment, I'll get it for you. Hey, you know, uh, I'd like to get one of those, too. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, the, the gimmick, the gizmo, what we all need. Oh, I couldn't. This is much too... Oh, take it. Take it, please. Good day. <laughs> they can't seem to wait. $5,000 for a gun, You're right. a pair of rubber gloves, a test tube, and now a gun. Rather a weird assortment, wouldn't you say? I would indeed. And now, if you'll excuse Is me... Is the price always $5,000? It varies. Hmm. Business? That sounds like a threat. No. Just my duty as a citizen. Your business might be blackmail. So it might. Well, then I'd better tell the police. Well, you have my blessing. Martha, shall I put up some tea? Well, that would be nice. Perhaps the young man would like a cup. Oh, no, no. He has an appointment with the police. No, department. no, no. It can wait. No. I just love a cup of tea. I wouldn't want to keep you. Oh, you win, hands down. I had no intention of going to the police, and I think you knew it. It would make little difference either way. Frankly, all I'm interested in is the story. Or let's put it another way. I see a sign which says, I have what you need. I'm a poor, struggling writer, but am I less in need than the wealthy-looking people that you serve? Peter, I think the young man has a point. You come to me then as a customer? Well, yes, as a customer. Will you excuse me a moment? I'll put up the tea.
this, Mr. Carmichael, is what you need. Carry it on your person. Thank you. You know, I think I'm beginning to get your racket now. You're an extremely intelligent young man. You're some kind of phony medium. You spin a few dials and tell the future, and then you sell it at 5,000 per. It's quite a deal. Good day, Mr. Carmichael. You can whistle for the 5,000. I had no intention of charging you that fee. I know you couldn't afford it. And what do I owe you? Pay me after you're satisfied. When will I know? Soon enough. Oh, there's one thing I must tell you very frankly. I'm not very happy with you as a customer. I must ask you to promise that you'll never come near my shop again, nor mention it to anyone. In exchange for what? In exchange for what I've given you. My worth of your service. It will be worth much to you. Keep it on your person. through with the old buzzard yet. I'll get something out of this. Yeah. Maybe another pair of scissors. I said stop it. Don't push me around. I don't go for it. Look, if you're going to mope on that, you may as well take me home. Well, I got to figure it. There's an angle somewhere. There's always an angle. And you're always figuring. I tell you the truth, I'm getting a little tired of waiting around for you to come up with the right answer. I tell you, I saw it. A check for $5,000. Six banker types walk in and walk out with packages. What if they all pay $5,000? That's $30,000. You and your telephone numbers. Big talk. But we always wind up eating in the automat. Dutch. The very least I get out of this is a story. That I promise. Yeah, you won't even get that. You want to bet? Come on, drink up. Well, what's the rush? Makeup night on Fred's magazine. I think maybe I can badger him into giving me a little advance on this yarn. Ha uh ha. -huh. He'll want the facts. What then, Sonny Boy? Just watch an operator operate. Five will get you ten. He okays the story. Hey, waiter, check. Yeah. Ah. Hey! Take it easy. Here, keep it. Hey, mister. You forgot something. Hmm? Better keep those two. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe you better give them to me. off a minute so we can talk? No. I can sell it to Coleman. Good, go ahead and do that. I like to give you first crack at my stuff. You like to come in here when I'm up to my ears and work and try to talk me into giving you a go ahead on something I'll be sorry for in the morning. You call yourself an editor, huh? Get nasty, that always helps. Tell you, it's a natural, it's a strike right down your alley. An old guy trying to police millionaires out of dough. All right, so we expose him. A good yard and a public service. You're always yapping about your magazine doing a public service. The day you get interested in public service, my friend, that'll be the day. Come on, you're boring the man. Rest easy. Give me one, just one objection. Just one? The last yarn you sold me cost me retraction and down near a light will soon. All right, I'll document the facts. Tom, I can't trust you. You smell a couple of bucks and you sit at home and get the whole story up out of your own head. Well, you can check it yourself. I'll take a picture of the place. Look, I don't deny that the place exists. What I want to know is what game the old man is playing. Well, I already told you. Sure, you told me. Go out and prove it. 
Bring it to me on black and white. Show me where the old man is a fraud. Give me facts. Well, give me a verbal go ahead. Give me a little. Give me a little advance. I'll tie the story tight enough for the FBI. No advance. If the idea's so hot, you're writer enough to go out and smell it out right through to the end. Bring something in here on paper, and I'll listen. Okay, you don't want first crack at it when I do. Well, that was close. You do tell. Wasn't my fault you got your scarf caught. All right, all right, there. take it easy. I ain't liable to sue. Well, this she is. It's a lucky thing. It's a darn lucky thing. You owe your life to these shears. Yeah. About that story, Tom. Oh. You'll listen now, huh? Yeah, look, I think we can all use a drink. I got a bottle right here in the drawer. Go get it, and then you can talk your head off. Okay? Let's go, honey. This, Mr. Carmichael, is what you need. Carry it on your person. Tom? Get your coat, baby. We're getting out of here. Tom, Tom, what about that story? Forget it. It's mine now. It's all mine. <laughs> We'll return to the second act of what you need in just a minute. Meanwhile, oh, are you a fishing fan? Well, if you're not, you will be after I show you this outfit. This is the Maslin Klamath coat, and it's made of specially woven Zealand-treated, Zealand-treated poplin. See uh, these pockets? Well, they're one of the things that make this most wonderful coat for any kind of fishing that you ever want to do at any time. See, they're bellows pockets, and there's enough room in them to hold all your lure boxes, all your other gear. Yes, even all that gear that, that you carry. Over here, we have some more pockets. This one for cigarettes. This one for sunglasses or glasses, depending on which kind you need. Here's a ring to hold your snippers. All you fishermen know what those are for. And here's a wonderful idea. These loops to put your rod in. If you want to free your hands, the butt down here, the rest of it here, so that you can change flies, light a cigarette, do anything you want to with your hands free. Now that's just the front. In the back, we have a ring back here, of course, for your landing net. And notice that this loop is rain jacket or anything like that in there. Now get this, all this coat, all those features, and it costs only $18.50. Now, when it gets a little warmer, well, Maslin has the answer to that, too. And that is the famous Maslin Tackle Pack fishing vest designed by Lee Wolf, who was one of America's foremost fishermen. Here you'll notice that everything is carried high and dry to make for easier wading. As you can see, you have all the features that you have in the Klamath coat. At 1575, it's no wonder that the Tackle Pack is just about the most popular single fishing garment in the country. See these two wonderful Maslin garments now at the store where you see this new display with the Tackle Pack over here, and on this side, the winter weather hunting coat, just to remind you that Maslin also makes fine clothes for hunting. Now, if you want the name of notify you where you can see all these fine Maslin clothes. And now back to act two of What You Need, starring William Redfield and Edgar Staley. service was hardly repayable. She has came in handy. Hmm? You know what happened? Yes. How? I asked you not to come back. I had to come back. You saved my life. Then we'll say that I accept your thanks and let's be done with it. Those men, the ones who come here to get what they need, they're clients. They keep returning. What if they are? Well, if you're willing to help them when they're in trouble, why not me? Is it the money? I'll get the money. It's not the money. I help those who are worthy of help. Why is it so important that you should see into your future? All right. I'll be honest with you. That would be wise. A knowledge of the future would help me over hurdles, hurdles that have blocked me in the past. I want to get married, Mr. Talley. My girl thinks I'm a flop. She's not the kind who would marry a flop. If I can find out what's in store for me, for us... You labor I'm... under a misapprehension. I cannot map out your future. Every man has several possible futures. The specific future that's to be yours must be your own free choice. Uh. I don't understand that. 
When you come in here, you're in the beam of my scanner. In my back room, I have a machine. By turning a calibrated dial, I can check on your possible futures. In one of these futures last night, I saw you killed by a printing press. And uh, in my other futures? I saw, well, let's say that I saw various possibilities, depending upon how you react to different crises that arise. Well, uh, tell me what they are. I can't do that. Why do you do it for others? It must be my own free choice. I stumbled on this power quite by accident. I don't care about that. But I do. I was a scientist. I, I worked with electronics, and I, at night I dabbled with astrology. The pure science and the abstract hobby led me to this. And I'm beginning to wonder if I can cope with it. Oh, now, come off it. I'm not a child. This thing, whatever it is, no, no matter how you came across it, it could be worth millions. I give every penny above my living expenses to charity. Tell it to Sweeney. Get out of here. I'm sorry I saved you. It's too late for that, old man, and much, much beside the point. Then come to your point, Mr. Carmichael. If you're not interested in money, that's your business. Well, frankly, money interests me. It always has. And in the end, money will kill you. Oh, no. Not so long as you can turn the dial on that machine. And what if I refuse? Something tells me you know the answer to that as well as I do. You claim you're not interested. Publicity will ruin you, and I'm just the guy to do it. I subscribe to your service. My price for silence is the future. I want to know what tomorrow will bring. I want what I need. I'd sooner wreck my machine. Go ahead! He's done so much good. One of those men you saw, the one who gave me the check for $5,000, in two years, he'll develop a serum to combat polio. Without the gun I gave him today, he'd have been killed by a thief who's ransacking his apartment. I'm not asking you to stop helping others. Just help me. Peter, perhaps it's best to do as he says. Where can I reach you? With what I need? Need. I'm, uh... Sorry, I had to, well, use persuasion. It's quite all right. I anticipated it. Mm. Must be certain, absolutely certain. seen a ghost. That's not ginger ale. Ah, I'm fine. I feel just great. You're higher than a kite. Mm hmm The world's a kite. I got it by the tail. Up in the cloud. It's a long way down. No, no, we're not coming down, baby. Not this time. Dream, dream, dream. The old man is worth a million bucks. A walking mint. You know, just one little machine. But in the hands of the right guy, you could own the world. Yeah, but it's his machine, and he's got other plans for it. No, I'm not interested in his plans. Not in the slightest. I don't know. I always thought I was pretty tough, but this... I don't know. Now, what goes through that beautiful blonde head of yours? The old man saved your life. Maybe you ought to be grateful. I told him thanks. What else? You're going to steal that machine, is that it? I don't know. 
I haven't exactly figured out the mechanics of it yet, but I get the machine. I get it, or I break a leg trying. If you don't quit drinking, you're li liable to break a leg, period. It's slippery outside. <laughs> well, we gotta celebrate, don't we? We don't make a million every day, or at least we didn't. You, Mr. Carmichael? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the flesh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Here, don't spend it all in one place. I don't think the old goat has a sense of humor. <laughs> Smooth. Yeah, well, just not the thing for a night like this. Yeah? But if it's what I need... Hey, what do you think you're doing? Are you crazy? Yeah, like a fox. You remember I almost threw away the shears? Well, little Tommy boy does not make the same mistake twice. All right, that's got it. Uh, let's blow. You'll fall flat on your face. It'll serve you right. Oh, oh. <laughs> is that my sweet little baby talking? Take it easy. It's wet outside. Hmm? Uh -uh. Never had a chance. I swear he, he slipped right in front of me. Like like he was pushed. No, Ma, please don't. I'd rather you didn't. Well, I just thought perhaps the no, music... No, no, we'd be interrupted by the news, and, and I'd have to hear the consequences of my action. Martha, I, I can't cope with... Darling, I don't understand. The boy. I killed him. Oh, well, I can't believe that. You, you couldn't do such a thing. And now for the local news. Just a half hour ago, the snowstorm claimed its first casualty. A man identified as Tom Carmichael was instantly killed when he slipped beneath the wheels of a truck. You... you could have saved him. Worse. I sent him to his death. He was evil, but... death is for God to decide. You had no right. And had I the right to step into the fate of all those others to play God on Earth? No mortal man has that right. Oh, Peter, you've done so much good. And tonight... I killed a man. There must have been cause. Yes, a cause. I saw it in the machine. A life for life. Tom Carmichael's for mine. In two weeks, he would have killed me and stolen the machine for his own evil gain. But even so, you had no right. I didn't ask for this terrible power. Oh, God, why was it granted me? It's not for man on earth. Thank <laughs> you.